Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. And this one really piqued my interest, I gotta say. It's this phenomenon called end of day reversal in the stock market. Interesting stuff. Yeah. And we're gonna be looking at a paper that just came out last month in November 2024. I think this is gonna be a fun one. Absolutely, yeah. So, first of all, for anyone who's not familiar with this, what are we even talking about here? What is end of day reversal? Well, in the simplest terms, you can think about it this way. Stocks that have been doing really well for most of the day, they tend to dip down a little bit in that last half hour of trading. And the opposite is true too, right? So if a stock has been having kind of a rough day, it might actually see a little bump right before the closing bell. So almost like the market takes a sudden U-turn right before closing time. That's a great way to put it. It's a pretty consistent pattern that researchers have been looking at. But this isn't just a fun fact, right? Mm -hmm. Like it has some pretty big implications for understanding how the market works, maybe even who's kind of pulling the strings behind the scenes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this research really helps us understand the different forces that are driving these price movements. It's not just random noise. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. So let's talk about that research. Tell me about this paper. Yeah, so this paper was written by Baltusin, Da, and Sobhag, and they did a really deep dive into the data. What they found is that there's a strong and persistent pattern here. It's statistically significant, meaning it's unlikely to just be random chance. Okay, so let's get specific here. What kind of evidence are we talking about? Paint a picture for us. Sure. One thing that really struck me was how they looked at portfolios. So they took stocks and grouped them based on how they were doing leading up to the last half hour of trading, yeah. sort of separating the winners from the losers. Right. And then, get this, they found that a portfolio of the day's worst performers, so the stocks that were really lagging behind, actually did better than a portfolio of the top performers. And this was during those last 30 minutes of trading on average. So wait, the stocks that were down all day suddenly pulled ahead right at the end. By how much? By an average of 3.49 basis points. Okay, I have to stop you there for a second. I think it's worth clarifying for folks who aren't, you know, Wall Street wizards, what is a basis point? Yeah, you're right. Sometimes the financial jargon can be a bit much. So a basis point is just a fancy way of saying one one hundredth of a percent. Okay. So 100 basis points would be equal to 1%. Got it. So basically, we're talking about fractions of a percent here. But why is that significant, especially if it's only happening in a short time frame, like you said, just that last 30 minutes? Right. Well, even though it seems small, remember, we're talking about the stock market. Small price movements, even over short periods, can add up to big profits or losses, right? Yeah, that's true. So to see that kind of consistent outperformance, even in just 30 minutes, is actually a pretty big deal. Makes sense. So we're seeing this measurable, consistent pattern yep. of stocks that are losing steam all day, then suddenly gaining ground right before closing. Now, my initial thought just hearing this is maybe this is just a matter of liquidity. Like fewer people are trading near the close, so the prices get a bit more volatile, right? That's a very common assumption, actually. A lot of people think that, but the researchers actually addressed that directly in the paper. They specifically looked at the largest and most actively traded stocks. Hmm. So in other words, the ones that are least likely to be affected by liquidity issues. Okay. And the pattern still held up. So it's not about the trading volume drying up. What about big news? You know, maybe companies are releasing earnings reports or something that tanks the price right at the close. Yeah, they actually investigated that as well. And based on their findings, it doesn't seem like there is a strong link between the end of day reversals and when news comes out. Whatever's causing this price pressure, it seems to be very temporary and really specific to just that last little bit of trading. OK, so it's not just bad news coming out late in the day. What about the idea that people are just cashing out their profits at the end of the day, you know, sort of locking in their gains before they call it a night? That's another good question. And one that the researchers looked into, they analyze the returns before the very last five minutes of trading, specifically to eliminate the effect of any kind of last minute selling frenzy. And they still found that the pattern persists. 
So it seems like there's something else going on here. It's not just people taking profits at the end of the day. Exactly. It points to something a little bit deeper. Okay, so what do they find? What's going on? Well, one of the things that they explored is the impact of options trading and specifically a strategy called gamma hedging. Gamma hedging. Okay, I'm already lost. Break that down for me. Right. So options trading can get pretty complex, but let me try to simplify it. Imagine you're betting on a horse race. Okay, I can picture that. You might place some smaller bets on other horses just to spread out your risk a little bit. Right, hedge your bets. Exactly. Well, option traders do something similar with stocks. They use this strategy called gamma hedging to manage their risk, and these hedging moves can actually create pressure on the stock price. So these option traders, they're trying to protect themselves, but in doing so, they're kind of nudging the stock price in one direction or another, and it's particularly noticeable in those last 30 minutes. That's the gist of it, and the data supports this. The researchers found that gamma hedging activity, especially by market makers who are handling a huge volume of option contracts, does seem to contribute to this end-of-day reversal. Okay, so that's one piece of the puzzle. But I hear there's another force at work here. This one involves everyday investors. You got it. And this is where it gets really interesting. The research suggests that retail investors, you know, just regular people buying and selling stocks, they might actually be a much bigger factor in this phenomenon than we might think. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that the average investor, you know, someone who's just checking their portfolio on their phone, is moving the market more than these giant Wall Street firms? It seems counterintuitive, but yeah, that's what the research is suggesting. Think about it. We see these big stock swings throughout the day, and when a stock is down, what do we tend to think? Oh, maybe it's a good time to buy low. It's a bargain. Exactly. Researchers call it the buy the dip mentality. And it turns out this behavior is strongest in those last 30 minutes of trading. They used three different ways to actually track retail trading. Everything from looking at small trade sizes to data from platforms like Robinhood. Mm. And they found that this buy the dip behavior is really concentrated in that last half hour. It's pretty wild, right? Yeah, it's like... We have more power than we think. Yeah. But if all these retail investors are jumping in at the end of the day, wouldn't that make the short sellers happy? You know, the ones who are betting on the stock to go down. Well, that's where things take another turn. What's really interesting is the paper actually found that short sellers become less active in that last half hour of trading, especially when a stock has already had a rough day. So they're getting scared when the price is dropping. That seems kind of counterintuitive, doesn't it? Well, think about it from their perspective. You know, when you're short selling, you're exposed to what's called overnight risk, meaning basically that the stock could rebound while they're not trading and then they end up losing money. Right. And when a stock has already dropped significantly, that overnight risk just becomes a lot bigger. So they're less likely to want to open new short positions at that point. So it's like a perfect storm, right? You have all these retail investors who are eager to buy the dip and then you have fewer short sellers who are willing to add more downward pressure. It creates this environment where those beaten down stocks can actually see a little bump right before the closing bell. Exactly. And the researchers looked at both retail trading and short selling activity in that last half hour. And they found that retail buying does tend to increase while short selling activity decreases. This is especially true for stocks that have already had a rough day. This is really making me rethink how the market works. You know, it's not just about those big institutions and algorithms anymore. We, the everyday investors, are actually having a measurable impact. Yeah, I think that's one of the really cool takeaways from this paper. It challenges the traditional view that individual investors don't have much influence, but the data shows that they actually do, especially at certain times, like at the end of the day. It's funny how we often hear about how retail investors are dumb money, you know, always chasing trends and making emotional decisions. But this research seems to suggest that maybe we aren't so dumb after all. Maybe we're actually pretty good at sniffing out bargains and recognizing some of these predictable patterns. I think there's definitely something to that. This research actually ties into a key concept in behavioral finance, which is this idea of investor attention. Where people's attention is focused, that can actually have a real impact on how prices move. Mm, okay. So how does this idea of investor attention connect to end-of-day reversal? Well, let's think about how you consume information throughout the day, right? You're scrolling through news headlines, checking social media, maybe even watching some financial news. All of this input shapes your perception of the market and influences which stocks you even pay attention to. Right. So we're bombarded with information 
constantly and it's affecting how we make decisions. Exactly. And this paper suggests that those shifts in attention can actually create real price movements. So at the start of the day, we might be more inclined to buy what we perceive as the hot stocks, the ones that have been dominating the headlines, right? It's all that overnight attention that we've been accumulating. It's driving our decisions. So at the open, we're kind of chasing momentum, influenced by what we've been reading and hearing about. Yeah, you could say that. But then... As the day goes on and we see all those inevitable intraday fluctuations, you know, stocks going up and down, our attention shifts a bit. We start to notice the stocks that have taken a dip. And that triggers a different kind of response, which is that buy the dip impulse. Interesting. So it's like we have two different mindsets at play almost. Right. At the open, we're more reactive, chasing those winners. But then by the close, we become more contrarian looking for opportunities to buy those beaten down stocks. And that's a great way to summarize it. And it shows just how complex human behavior can be in the market, right? Mm. We're not always rational actors. We're influenced by our emotions, our biases, and even, you know, as this paper highlights, where our attention is focused. You know, this is really making me rethink how I approach investing. What if the real key is not just crunching numbers and trying to predict the future, but instead understanding these psychological biases? I think that's a really important insight because if we can anticipate how other investors, whether it's retail investors or institutional investors, how they're likely to react in certain situations, it can help us make more informed decisions, right? Right. So it's less about predicting the future and more about understanding the present, recognizing patterns, and making educated guesses about how people are going to behave. Exactly. And this research gives us some pretty valuable clues in that regard. It shows us that, that there are certain patterns, like this end-of-day reversal, that seem to be driven by these predictable human biases. So how can we actually use this information to our advantage? What are some practical takeaways for the average investor? Well, I would say, first of all, don't assume that a stock's momentum throughout the day is going to necessarily carry through to the close. Be aware that this end-of-day effect exists. And second, remember that retail investors collectively, they do have a real impact, especially in those last 30 minutes of trading. Don't underestimate the power of the buy-the-dip mentality. So instead of blindly following trends or trying to time the market perfectly, we should be more aware of these underlying psychological forces. Mm -hmm. Think about who's buying, who's selling, and why. Absolutely. It's about understanding the motivations and the behaviors of the players in the market. And that actually leads to another interesting point that the researchers dug into, which is the contrast between how retail investors trade at the end of the day versus the beginning of the day. Okay, I'm curious. Tell me about this contrast. So we've been talking about this buy the dip mentality that seems to dominate that last half hour of trading. But their research actually suggests that retail investors behave a little bit differently at the start of the trading day. Instead of being contrarian, buying the losers like they do at the close, they actually tend to be more what we call extrapolative, meaning they buy the stocks that are already doing well. Hold on. So we're chasing momentum at the open and then switching to buy the dip at the close. It seems a little inconsistent, doesn't it? It might seem that way at first, but there's a psychological explanation for this kind of shift in behavior. Think about it. Overnight, we have all this time to digest news, process information, and form our own opinions. Uh. We might read about a company doing well, and then when the market opens, our natural inclination is to want to jump on that bandwagon. So it's like at the open, we're more reactive, driven by maybe FOMO, fear of missing out on those hot stocks. Exactly. But as the day goes on and we start to see all those inevitable price swings, stocks going up and down, our behavior starts to change a bit. We notice the stocks that have dropped and our bargain hunting instincts kick in. We start thinking, hey, this might be a good time to buy low. So at the beginning of the day, it's fear of missing out. And then at the end of the day, it's bargain hunting. Right. It highlights that our behavior in the market isn't always rational or predictable. We're complex creatures influenced by emotions and biases. So we've got this really interesting contrast between how we behave at the open versus the close. But how does this all connect back to this bigger picture of end of day reversal? Well, it just adds another layer of complexity to the story, but it also underscores the point that we as retail investors were a much bigger part of these market dynamics than we often realize. Yes, not just the big institutions calling all the shots, it's us too, right? We're shaping the market with our decisions. It really seems that way. And that's why it's so important to understand these biases and these market dynamics, because it gives us a better chance of navigating this complex landscape. 
You know, it's funny. We always hear about these strategies for beating the market, like there's some magic formula out there. But what if the real secret is just understanding human behavior? I think that's a brilliant insight. Because if we can understand how other investors, both retail and the big institutions, if we can anticipate how they're going to react, then we can start making smarter decisions for ourselves. So it's less about trying to predict the future and more about just understanding the present, recognizing patterns, and then kind of making an educated guess about how people are going to react. Exactly. And that's where this research comes in handy because it gives us clues about those patterns, right? It shows us that things like this end of day reversal, they're not just random. They're actually driven by these very predictable psychological factors. Okay, so bottom line, what should we be doing differently? What's the takeaway for the everyday investor? Well, the first thing I'd say is don't underestimate the power of psychology. Be aware of your own biases and know that those biases are at play for millions of other investors too. So when you see a stock doing something, whether it's going way up or way down, ask yourself, what's really driving this? Is this based on, you know, solid fundamentals or is there something else going on? It really changes how you look at things, doesn't it? It's not just about charts and numbers. It's about the human element behind it all. 100%. And that's what makes investing so fascinating, right? It's this mix of finance, psychology, even a bit of sociology. It's all about understanding how people make decisions and how those decisions shape the market. This has been amazing. We started with just a simple question about end of day reversal. And now we've gone on this incredible journey talking about human behavior, the power of attention, all these different market dynamics. Who knew there was so much to uncover in just that last half hour of trading? Right. It just shows that even in a well-studied field like the stock market, there are still new discoveries to be made. Well, I think that's a perfect place to wrap things up. Thanks for joining us on another deep dive. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, Keep those brains engaged. The market is full of surprises, and knowledge is your best weapon. 